Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, last week, I was in LA for really less than 24 hours where my beloved dog, Bailey, was having surgery. So I went to a restaurant, not just any restaurant, probably one of the best vegan restaurants in LA or anywhere because they were voted top 10 in the world. It's called Sun Cafe. It's in Studio City on Ventura Boulevard. And I had the most delicious dinner. I posted all the photos on Facebook and Instagram. And I got the chef owner, vegan chef Ron, to come on today and make some recipes for you. He's going to be making some unique and healthy holiday recipes because believe it or not, we got Thanksgiving coming up. Well, first we'll have Halloween, of course, but he's going to make a pumpkin stuffing that you can enjoy as a raw recipe or as a cook recipe and an El Salvadorian lime rice. None of his recipes today contain any oil. They're not free. And did you know that his restaurant, I didn't know this, has a Ornish approved menu? Please welcome to the show, Vegan Chef Ron. It's so nice to see you. Hi. How are you, Chef AJ? Hi. Twice in one week. Once at the restaurant, oh. once here. Boy, you, you, you should be so proud of the food at your restaurant. I mean, that, I mean, that it's just outstanding, really outstanding. Thank you so much. We try very hard to make it uh, spectacular. Yeah, it really was. It was, you, you know, and and um, one of the things I was so happy when you said something because I teach cooking classes, uh, not in person yet, but I still do virtual classes. And people get upset with me when I say, you know, get vanilla powder, and they say it's expensive. And yes, it is expensive, but you made a little dessert for us, if you will. It was like a smoothie, a little sample for everyone, and everybody went nuts, saying it was like the best. And you said the secret was the vanilla powder. You are a real chef. You own a popular restaurant. Could you please once and for all explain to people <laughs> how subpar vanilla extract is and that it's probably better if you can't use vanilla powder to not even use extract? Uh, well, certainly we have discovered over the 13 years we've been open and, and there was a time where we used organic extract, but it just does not compare. It's not even in the same ballpark as fresh ground vanilla beans. And it's crazy expensive, I get it. Uh, we put a dollar worth of vanilla in every shake. Just the vanilla costs us a dollar. And um, we buy it, I think it, as I remember, it costs somewhere around, uh, I don't know, $200 a pound for vanilla powder. But for us, it's worth it. It just is so, it really brings out the vanilla flavor. It's, it, I think, no, I don't think anyone would disagree that it was worth it if they actually would invest in it and try it. It, it makes such a difference in dessert recipes. Yes, indeed. It, and, and you don't use that much. Um, I mean, it, per ounce, it looks very expensive, but you're, you're going to use, like if it says, um, whatever, a teaspoon of extract, you're not going to use a teaspoon of ground vanilla. You're going to use like an eighth of a teaspoon or somewhere in there. So it's a lot less than like if the recipe calls for extract, you're going to use a lot less of the powder. Have you ever heard of vanilla water? Like you, you, you're probably familiar with the restaurant Cafe Gratitude, right? Sure. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I got their cookbook years ago and they used to make something called vanilla water where they would take, I believe it was three vanilla beans and a cup of hot water and blend it. And they would, and, and, and even that is better than extract. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. I mean, the more or less that's, that's vanilla powder. You know, it's just diluted vanilla powder. But, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Oh, sure. Well, I, I, felt, I felt I felt vindicated when you said that because people were like always arguing with me about extract and it's terrible. It's it's it yeah. just doesn't. It's like the ec vanilla extract vanilla powder, Ron, is like the difference of a boxed almond milk that's mostly water or making your own almond milk. Right. It's, it's, I no think it's even more dramatic than that. Yeah. I think it's way more dramatic. Um, First of all, extract can taint the flavor of things because of the alcohol in it. Uh, so, you, you know, it's it's very different. And, and I think it's well worth it. And even if you pay whatever, $30 for a you know package of vanilla powder, it'll probably last you a couple of years in, in normal circumstances at home. Right. Is there a particular brand that you prefer? No, no, uh, I, I haven't noticed too much difference between the, the, the couple that we bought. We buy them on, believe it or not, we buy them on Amazon. Um, 
they're not easy to find. You generally don't find them in stores. And so we just buy it on Amazon. Yeah, that's where I get mine. Well, you're going to make some really interesting sounding recipes today. And are these dishes that you normally will serve together for Thanksgiving, the, the rice and the stuffing? They don't necessarily go together. Um, one is more of a, a take on traditional, which is the, the, the pumpkin uh, stuffing. The other one, El Salvador and rice, doesn't make necessarily sense as, as a traditional dish. But I think it's a festive dish, so that's why I think it works for, uh, you know, something a little different. Um, but the uh, pumpkin stuffing, uh, I, when I was doing all raw classes uh, quite a few years ago, I came up with this recipe. And so you can eat it raw, meaning not cooked, so that all the natural enzymes are still in the food. Uh, that's probably not how most people use it. It's still good that way. But, you know, you put it in the oven and you bake it a while, about 30 minutes uh, on a fairly low temperature, like 325, and you get a really nice stuffing effect. Uh, what makes it interesting to me is you can do it without bread, which seems counterintuitive, like, well, how is it stuffing then? But to replace the, uh, the, the carbs uh, of the bread, you're going to just use the pumpkin. And it works quite nicely just by itself. Now, that being said, you can add um, bread to make it even more traditional. Uh, you can either use gluten-free or just regular bread if you're okay with that. And um, all of those will work. So it's pretty versatile. Um, it's kind of, you use the basics and then you can add or subtract from there. Nice. Hey, Ron, I do have a question from a live viewer named Jennifer. Yeah. It's about vanilla powder. And she, I agree with what she says. She says, sometimes it can make recipes very dark when you don't want it dark. Any oh, idea how to use it, but to keep it light in color for certain recipes? Well, that's a tough one. Yeah. Like if you're doing like a vanilla pudding or something, yeah, it's going to have black specks in it. Um, and I don't know how to get around that, quite frankly. Yeah, because it is, a, it is, vanilla is brown. And, and when you see white vanilla powder, that's, that's processed and it has sugar in it. Yes, right, right. And probably not even really vanilla powder. It's probably some derivative um, like an extract. Yeah. Well, thanks. Yeah. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get started on the, uh, uh, the pumpkin stuffing. Now, um, you, can, you can alter this, uh, but uh, I do use a decent amount of um, uh, celery for this, uh, two cups. Uh, to give it some crunch. Uh, the pumpkin, I already uh, So two things. So you can actually have this year round. You don't have to have pumpkin because butternut squash is so close to pumpkin. I, I don't know anyone that can tell the difference taste wise. Uh, they're very similar. So um, you, can, you can use that year round or when pumpkins are in season, they're usually pretty inexpensive. So you can use pumpkin. Um, and uh, I've already um, uh, cut it a little bit so that um, we didn't have to go through that, but it's pretty easy. You just uh, get, always get whatever you're cutting to a flat surface. Now the first cut or so, you might not be able to have a flat surface, but once you do, then you can shave off the outside. I just use a knife to shave off the outside. You know, you just go, you know, down the side, um, uh, once you have the flat surface. Um, so I'm going to chop up the celery just a little bit. Now, you can't just chop everything traditionally, but I'm going to just show you a fast way. You can use a, a food processor. You're just going to uh, pulse it a little bit so that we don't have big pieces, but uh, we don't have to chop it all up if you don't want to go through that hassle. So I'm just going to chop the celery uh, to, you know, modest sized pieces. What about kabocha squash? That's my favorite. I've never tried that, but I'm sure it would be fine. Kind of squash, most squashes don't have a whole lot of flavor if you just taste them. Uh, so I'm sure it would be fine. Uh, my favorite probably is delicata squash uh, because you can eat the skin on delicata. Um, I don't know if I would want to do it raw necessarily, but 
I love it because you can cook it and eat the whole thing. Um, and also they're, I, I think they're really nice looking and they, you know, you can stuff them and they look real pretty because of the outside and then you don't have to peel them. So, uh, so I'm just gonna add these things to the food processor. And then you're gonna cut the, uh, the squash into about the same size. Um, so little squares of the squash. I'm gonna do two at a time here. And it doesn't have to be real exact because we're gonna pulse it and, and make it pretty small. It's, it's not gonna go down to, you know, uh, nothing. You want texture to this, so you're not gonna cut it down to zero, but. Do you have a favorite food processor, like the Breville, for example? Uh, I don't really on a personal level, you know, mostly I use one at work. Um, and, and so we have a industrial strength kind of one. Um, so I don't know that my, my home one is a Hamilton beach. It's just a super cheap $20 one, but where I would spend my money in the kitchen is on a blender. I think blenders are drastically different. So like using a, a, a Vitamix makes a huge difference compared to a Hamilton beach in that setting but I feel like food processors are pretty, I mean, some will last you more because they're better built, but as far as processing, they're about the same, whereas blenders are not at all. So that's where I would spend my money in the kitchen because you're gonna spend, you know, close to three fifty, four hundred dollars on a, on a good blender. So, but you, I don't feel you have to spend that kind of money on a food processor. Thanks. So looks like cheddar cheese here, but I sure you cheddar cheese, your your nacho sauce cheese was off the chain, man. That oh, was thank you. Good. Yeah, it's um uh, it has uh, we use sunflower seeds as the base along with uh, red pepper and then lots of spices to get it uh, to be interesting. Okay, and then um, it calls for a tomato. Um, that's an, I would say that's an option for this recipe. Um, I'm not gonna use it today. I didn't have one today. So I'm just gonna uh, use these two as the base. And then I'm gonna add uh, some garlic. This is uh, minced garlic. If, if it's not minced, you would want to um, uh, chop it up a little bit because if you just have the whole cloves, it's not going to, um, you could do it first and chop it up and then add the bigger ingredients. So that's an option. Now we're going to add our seasoning, which of course is what makes the stuffing interesting. Uh, so I've got onion powder and then we've got thyme. And then we've got um, sage. And then finally, we've got rosemary. I've just got a fresh sprig of rosemary here. Um, the way you, um, the way I do it anyway, is I just go the opposite direction that the rosemary is growing in. So you go down and it just pulls all off real easily that way. The very top, uh, you have to pull that off. But, and then uh, again, I'm gonna chop this a little bit because the food processor isn't gonna, uh, hit the smaller items like it's going to hit the bigger items. So you need to chop them up to smaller. Hey, Ron, Julius is saying you can get a food processor option for a Vitamix. Have you heard that? I did not know that. That sounds interesting. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't seen that. That must be the newer models. I haven't seen the newer models since the pandemic. And then finally, the other kind of secret ingredient we're going to use in this is miso. Uh, I'm using a, a yellow miso. So I like Miso Master um, is my favorite brand. They're organic and uh, I feel like their, their seasoning is really good. You'll see the different colors. You'll see white miso, yellow, brown, and uh, red. So ba the basic rule is they get more and more savory and intense the darker the color is. So white miso, if you want just a slight flavoring to it, yellow or brown. 
uh, to, to get a, a more rich. And then like the red is the most flavorful, I feel like. Um, so I'm gonna add that in. You eat at the restaurant every day? Um, most days. I live two blocks from the restaurant. The only way to own a restaurant is to be very close to it. <laughs> I never want to get on the freeway in Los Angeles. If I had to drive every day to the restaurant, I get called over probably two or three times a day. So I'd either have to stay the second I got there all day and night, uh, or um, you got to do a lot of driving because you're going to be going there multiple times a day. So it's just easier to live walking distance. Um, so, and like I said, we're going to pulse this. So we're not going to, we're not going to puree it down to a, a you know, a, a liquid. Uh, we want, we want some texture to it. And you're just going to wait until it gets to maybe two or three times the size of a, a grain of rice. So it's still got some texture to it, but it's fairly small. One thing I didn't add is salt, so I'm gonna add a little salt. Obviously salt is a personal thing. Uh, I know some people are on restricted diets, so you know, use your, your best judgment. I like a little salt. I'm just using um, a Celtic salt here. Um, I'm putting in, uh, for this much, I'm putting in about a, a half a teaspoon. That's it a couple more times to get the salt through. And show the camera here what you've got so far. So see the texture there? It's, you know, it's visible that there's texture to it, but it's pretty small. And then the final thing, we're going to add raisins, or you could add dates is another thing you could do. Um, and then just mix that in. Now, you don't want to pulse them because you want them full size. Um, uh, they'll, they'll pulse down pretty small, and they also will kind of get stringy if you pulse them. So, you know, I don't like to, to pulse them in. So I'm just going to stir them in. When and then, like I said... Like I said, you're going to put this in the oven, like for most people. If you want to keep it raw, you can put it in a dehydrator if you have one, um, or just serve at room temperature. Uh, but I think it's best if you cook it and get a little browning. You cook it until the, the top starts to get a little brown, so it gets a little crunchy. Um, and that's the best way. And like I said, if you want, you can make it um, more traditional by adding some after you pulsed it, add, you know, just chop up some pretty fine uh, bread and, and add that in and then bake it in uh, uh, with the rest. But this way, you're getting just vegetables rather than uh, grains. And, uh, you know, for health, I feel like this is probably the healthier way to do it without the bread. But, you know, hey, if it's the holiday and you want it's a little more traditional. You can always do that with the, the bread uh, pieces. So. Uh, Christine says, can you use chickpea miso? What's that? Can you use chickpea miso? Uh, sure. Any, any miso will work. Yeah. Um, I've also used, um, there's some grain misos. Um, I've tried all those. It, they taste great. So I feel like the taste is pretty much the same. So if you're trying to avoid soy, so a miso is made from soy. So there it is. And, um, and I would bake it, but my oven makes, it's a convection oven, so it's gonna make some noise. So I'm gonna <laughs> avoid that because it'll be too noisy. Okay. But you get the gist of how you make that. And, um, uh, you know, substitutions that you could do with the add bread, don't add bread. The only constants are, I feel like celery and the pumpkin uh, are kind of essential. Like I say, the tomato is nice. It adds a little flavor that's interesting. Um, uh, 
Uh, you could also add onion if you like some onion in there, uh, fresh onion, chop it pretty fine though. You don't want big pieces in there, uh, but that's another thing you could add. Uh, I'm sure there's other vegetables you could add in there. Uh, you could probably add some zucchini or, you know, kind of whatever you have around. You could add carrots to it. All that will work, but the, the base is the celery, the pumpkin slash butternut squash, and the seasoning. The seasoning is what makes it. So there you go. Now, El Salvadoran rice. I, I actually had this dish. I, I had not been a vegetarian that long. Well, I've been vegetarian for 45 years. So maybe seven years into my veg journey, I went to a restaurant called Good Earth. They're all gone now, sadly. But they had a special one night, El Salvadoran rice, which I'd never heard of. And, you know, this is 40 years ago. Now we have all these ethnic restaurants, especially in Los Angeles. And back then you didn't. You had some. You had Thai and you had Indian. But now you've got everything. The Peruvian, you see, uh, Argentine, et cetera. You know, uh, Ethiopian, all those were not really around back then. But... Um, I thought it was a really interesting recipe and this is my take on it. I've kind of done, done it differently than if I originally had it. And I don't know if it's a traditional El Salvadoran rice or not, probably not, but it tastes good. So what, what, uh, what more can I say? So the, the first thing you do with this dish is you take the chili powder, which you'll see in the recipe and the cumin and the salt, whatever level you want to add, and you cook it with the rice. So you put it all, so it calls for one and a half cups of rice. So about three cups of water with the, the herbs in it. And this is what you get. You get, it's nice and infused into the rice. I feel if you cook the rice, you, you can cook the rice and then add the, the uh, seasoning later. It certainly will work. But I feel it's best if, if you don't have any cooked rice and you're gonna cook the rice anyway, just cook it with it. And then um, I feel it, it really gets into the rice and makes it more uh, appealing. Now with this is also another one where you can kind of use whatever vegetables you like. So um, I'm gonna use uh, a little bit of celery, carrot, zucchini. It doesn't call for it in the recipe that you have, but you can use red or, or green pepper. Certainly uh, Latin food uses a lot of peppers. Um, I'm, I'm, I just saw uh, this in the kitchen. It looks so nice, uh, so fresh. I thought, you know, I'm going to add some pepper today. And then we're going to also add onion. Um, and then we'll go along with the different seasonings. And this you want to have pretty small pieces. You can either do like thin slices or you can cut uh, the celery in half and do little pieces that way. So, you know, pretty, pretty small pieces. So when you eat at the restaurant, do you order off the menu or do you make something up for yourself? That's a good question. Um, depends on which specials we have that month. If I love the specials, like this month, we have a, um, a burrito bowl. Oops. Uh, Uh oh, did he leave? Yikes. And I can't finish this by myself. Ah, Zoom. How are you guys doing? Well, Jennifer will ask your question as soon as he comes back, and hopefully he will come back. Oh, here he is. Oh, excuse me. Oh, air conditioning. You coming back? Um, hold on. Almost. Okay. <laughs> remember, remember, turn your phone, turn your phone so you. Yeah, it's turned on my end here. Uh, yeah, there you go. Perfect. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, so, uh, what was I saying? Um, so, uh, you know, you're going to cut fairly small celery. Same with the carrots. And like I said, you can use whatever uh, you like. I mean, uh, but... 
the rice is the star in this and the vegetables are the accompaniment. Um, so we got rice, we got the zucchini. Uh, I love zucchini. Um, it's very healthy uh, vegetable for you. It's also one of the most versatile vegetables. It's, it's um, very neutral flavored. So you can kind of whatever seasoning you give to it, it'll absorb it. So we're gonna use the lime and the chili that'll absorb into this nicely. And then also it has a nice texture to it. If you don't cook it too far, you get a little more chewy and chewy is something you don't really get with a lot of vegetables. So I feel like uh, that's a good texture that um, we're gonna add with um, cooking the zucchini. And then I've got onion. Um, now I didn't call for it uh, in your recipe, but I saw the, the minced garlic and like, yeah, let's put some minced garlic in too. That's certainly a very uh, Mexican uh, thing to do or El Salvadorian thing to do is to add garlic to things. I'm gonna turn on my burner here. I am gonna use a little olive oil spray just so things don't stick. Although I am using cast iron, which doesn't generally um, stick to too much uh, to it. Turn up the tip a little bit. And uh, we're gonna start with the onion because we want it to start to get to be a little translucent. And then we'll add in the other vegetables, all the rest of them all at the same time. While that's doing that, I'm gonna take my lime. To, oh, I didn't do the pepper. Take half a pepper here. You know, you were in the middle of answering about um, what you eat at the restaurant. When we oh, yes. So, um, so yeah, we have a burrito bowl right at the moment that's awesome. And I've been getting that about every other day, it's so good. Um, but yeah, I do make my own stuff. I'll just go back there and grab a bunch of vegetables and figure out a sauce to make with it or um, you know, add some rice to it, make it into a stir fry, add some tempeh, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so where did my spoon go? That's starting to cook up. And then uh, go ahead and add my garlic, the vegetables. Probably normally you'd let the onions go a little bit longer, you know, like three or four minutes until they start, like you say, starting to get uh, translucent is the best. Oh boy, those peppers smell so good. So I'm big on recipes being versatile. You don't have to follow every inch of the recipe. It's all about the seasoning and then, you know, figuring out whatever vegetables. You could certainly add a green to this, a leafy green. You could add spinach or chard or something like that. Uh, I am a huge fan of eating lots and lots of leafy greens every day. I, I try to do a pound of leafy greens a day because it's the most nutrient dense food there is. It has every possible benefit uh, food can have. They have phytonutrients to fight off cancer and other diseases. They have all your fiber. They have every nutrient you can think of except B12, maybe a little bit of B12. Um, that's the one thing that vegans have to supplement typically. And then um, uh, uh, they, they just um, add so much to our gut health and you can't do much better than eating leafy greens. The way I get down a pound is I typically do a green smoothie and a big salad. Um, you can also throw greens into almost anything. So you're cooking a stir fry or a casserole or whatever, throw in a handful of spinach or some chopped up chard or, you know, even bok choy. Uh, I use bok choy in my smoothies. 
Um, so leafy greens is the magic in my opinion. Yeah. There's a question about the sodium content of miso from Jennifer, yeah. the different colors, do they have different sodium levels? And do they change the color of the dish? For example, if it's red miso, does it make the dish red? Um, they, they don't artificially change the colors. Um, they're natural in the way they process it. Uh, I don't know the full processing, but it's not an added color. It's uh, how long they ferment it and all has effect on it. I think they all have about the same amount of salt. They are high in salt. They are like soy sauce. Uh, in that respect. Um, so they do have a decent amount of sodium. Um, so yeah, they, they're gonna have sodium. Now I added both the miso and salt. So you could leave out the salt if you're, or you could cut the miso in half, just have a little bit of seasoning over the miso. So those are all possible. So my vegetables are getting close. Uh, I'm gonna go one more minute here. I'm actually going to grab a little bit of water. Uh, Ron, there's a question. What if somebody can't have any sodium? Any sodium? Yeah. Any added sodium? Um, no added sodium. Well, then obviously you're going to have to leave out the miso. Um, you might want to bump up the, uh, the herbs, maybe another 30% over the, the, you know, the sage and the, time and all uh, to give it a little more kick um, and it'll still be good but I do like the miso in it if you can okay and the same with the vegetables we don't want them to get soft but we want them to get a little translucent and certainly the uh, zucchini you'll see it start to get just a little translucent and that's when you know it's more or less done and then uh, I'm going to go ahead and add the black beans um, we can just use a can of black beans, uh, PVA free can, hopefully, and then you just rinse them off. Um, or you can cook them if you, you uh, are willing to go the time to cook the beans. Uh, they do take a bit. Um, and you could actually, even without the rice, that's pretty good with some seasoning, that would be good. But um, the rice really makes it a nice dish. So I'm going to add the rice that I, as I said, I pre-cooked. Linda, wants, Linda wants to know if you have any concerns about arsenic in rice. So I get organic rice. Um, I know, I know there's some concern over uh, arsenic in rice, but no, I don't have too much concern when I'm buying organic. Um, uh, and also I don't eat rice every day. Um, I, now I know some people have problems with soy, um, soy, one thing people are concerned about that they maybe don't have to be as concerned about is the hormones in, in tofu and soy. Um, Dr. Uh, Brager talks about this, that there are hormone blockers in soy. And so you don't actually absorb the hormones in, in uh, soy. Um, so uh, I think soy is, is fine for a lot of people. Some people have sensitivities or allergies, so you gotta be more careful. But um, uh, I don't think it's as big a deal as some people have made it out to be. At least from my research, you can do your own, see what's best for you. Everyone is different for sure. Um, you know, what, what I can tolerate, you know, other people can't. So you, you do have to be mindful of your own body to some extent. So uh, now I'm gonna add the lime. Oh. Ron, for, for your Ornish menu, are you restricted in how much sodium you can use or is it just the fat? Uh, they're primarily worried about the fat. Um, they want lower sodium, but they're not super strict. Um, so, you know, they don't want it heavy sodium. So uh, one little trick, 
you know, if you have a spoon, you just stick it into the lime and you can juice it that way pretty easily. Has Dr. Ornish ever eaten at your restaurant? I do not know. Not that I know of. I know he's had some of the food at the, at the hospital. He has a clinic at UCLA Medical Centers where we send the food. We, we actually feed his pa many of his patients, um, uh, sometimes as many as four meals a week um, we provide for them. And, uh, oh, uh, if you don't know about this, so limes can sometimes be pretty hard. And so sometimes just putting some pressure and rolling it a little bit will help break up the membranes inside. So when you cut it, it'll juice easier. There's quite a bit of lime in this. I, I love lime. I think it's one of the great flavors there is. Citrus of all kinds are, are awesome. Uh, I, we do an orange sauce for uh, a lo mein dish at the restaurant. Uh, lemon, of course, is you can't cook me, uh, Mediterranean food without lime, without lemon. It's in virtually every uh, dish from, from certainly Greece, I don't think there's a dish I've ever seen that doesn't have lemon in it from Greece. Also, Moroccan food has a lot, lot lemon a lot of the time. Uh, uh, certainly, Italian food has a lot of lemon. And, and Middle Eastern food has tons of lemon. Now I'm just going to stir that lime juice around. And... What's your most popular dish on the menu and on the Ornish menu? On the Ornish menu? Well, I mean, there's different ones. We'll cook him, but his patients specific kinds of dishes that aren't on our, our normal menu. Um, our most versatile dish is our, is our, um, this up sorry um is our stir fry because we can we make it from scratch so you know you we can do whatever you need if you need no garlic no onion no whatever we can we can make it that way so that's one of the dishes that the ornish um people use quite a bit um uh so anyway here is our let me see if i can do a above shot here that is our rice, and there is our, our stuffing. So, any questions about what we did there? Wow. Oh, one of the things on the, um, forgot to mention on the uh, rice is we can add cilantro to it. Um, I know most people are trying to do low fat, but some, some, uh, some cashews on there is really nice. If you don't mind a little bit of fat. Um, uh, oh goodness, what else could you put on there? Um, uh, oh, another thing you could add to that dish, probably not traditional, but peas would be nice in there um, and add a little protein. Uh, you don't have to use black beans. You could use pinto beans in this dish uh, or even um, not traditional you know, Latin, but um, even white beans or northern beans would be really good in there. So the chili powder would make it give you the, the Latin feel, but, you know, you can alter it, you know, depending on what you have in your kitchen. You don't always feel like you have to run out to get something. Uh, I always think, well, well, what other alternatives can I use? You know, what do, I've got these ingredients. What can I make with it? And uh, uh, I think it's important not to be too fixed uh, that you have to have these exact ingredients. Uh, cooking needs to be easy. We all live super busy lives and to have to go run to the store every time you need a single ingredient, you can probably find another ingredient in your kitchen that will suffice. And uh, so I'm big on just being kind of flexible in the kitchen. Uh, it doesn't have to be the same every time. And sometimes you discover really cool combinations that way. You know, you, 
this is what I had. And so I threw it in and sometimes it's better. So don't be afraid to be experimental in the kitchen a little bit. Yeah, that's what I tell people when I teach, but they always want the exact recipe and I don't even use the exact recipe. I hear you. I, I get that. You know, you want it as good as it was the previous time, but, um, you know, you know, it's, it doesn't hurt to try a, a little bit and see what, what happens. Yep. Uh, Sheila says, is there a cookbook in the future? <laughs> oh, my goodness, the cookbook. So I've been working on a cookbook forever. Um, and it's more or less done. It just, uh, the, the, the layout, the person I had doing the layout has since gone other directions. And so it's like half laid out at the moment. So I don't know when the cookbook is, the answer is, I don't know when it's coming. It's, I do have a, um, a seven day cooking series of lunches and dinners. Um, that is, uh, you can contact me at ron at suncafe.com, ron at suncafe.com. And I um, uh, can send you a link to the video and there's a little ebook that comes with it with all the recipes. So there is that available. And what is that? There's a fee for that, I would assume, right? There is a fee for that. It's uh, $12.95. Well, it's very reasonable. I'll put that in the show notes as well. Sure. Any other questions? Oh yeah, well, <laughs> Larry wants to know, where can I get the nacho recipe? <laughs> um, well, um, that's a good question. Uh, I guess go ahead and uh, email me, ron at suncafe.com and anybody that wants it, I'll, I'll send you the nacho recipe. Oh my God, that's amazing. I'll email no, it's you. Not, it's not fat free. It is got sunflower seeds in it, but um, you know, it's pretty healthy. It's, it was absolutely delicious. I cannot tell you how much I enjoyed that meal. Linda, wait, now who's asking a question? It's a, oh, here it is. It's about whether or not you can take the pumpkin stuffing and make it into a loaf. That's what June would like to know. Yeah, I don't think it would work very well, um, especially if you want the little bit of crunch. You want to lay it out not too thick when you put it in a pan so that a decent amount of it will get a little crunchy. That's where I think it tastes the best. Um, so I don't think it would work as a loaf. Got it. Nice. Well, wow. These were great recipes. Thank you so much. Thanks, AJ. I enjoyed it. Are you going to be doing a Thanksgiving at the restaurant, either for people to eat in or take out? We traditionally do a box um, uh, that's pretty big. It's usually about eight courses. Um, it's for one person, but really it's enough for two people. And they usually are around $75, $80. I know that's a lot, but um, it's a lot of food. You get um, pumpkin pie cheesecake, you, and then we'll have two entrees to choose from. One will always be gluten-free. Um, uh, you get you know stuffing and you get green beans with garlic and you know uh, salad and, Lots and lots of different things, uh, uh, cranberry, uh, homemade cranberry sauce, and on and on, all the things you, you get. It's, it's a very big meal. Um, so you can look on our website, suncafe.com, uh, a little closer to November, and you should see it there. Oh, do you deliver to Northern California? <laughs> Sadly, we have not figured out how to transport stuff I know other people are able to ship, but we, we have not had awesome success with it. Yeah, because I don't know if you know John Tanner, because he has a food delivery company. He, he was a heart patient, and he's, he's, he's delivering now everywhere. I know. I've seen these people doing it, and we've tried with dry ice to do, and we've done it, but we're not kind of equipped to it. And I just it was just awfully difficult for us to, to pull off. You have to have the right packaging and you kind of have to really be set up for it. Well, if you can't do that, why not just franchise? Sun <laughs> there you go. Everywhere. Why doesn't somebody yeah. do that for you? That would be great. Right. Boy, it was so great connecting with you last week and again today. I really that was fun. It. You had a nice group there. 
Yeah. And it's uh, your restaurant's amazing guys. If you haven't been there, if you, especially if you live in that area, of Southern California, you must get the to sun cafe and get the nachos. You will not be disappointed. I promise. Yeah. Yeah. Some of our other popular dishes, the nachos is by far our most popular dish. Uh, we make lots of interesting things for that. We make our own sour cream. Uh, we make our own chorizo out of sunflower seeds for that. Um, and then, uh, we also have an amazing lasagna, kind of the secret ingredient for that is we put pesto in our lasagna um, to give it an even more flavor. Um, we have um, uh, we have a Thai mandarin salad that's really good. We have, uh, oh my goodness, our mac and cheese has won three different awards as the best vegan mac and cheese in LA. It's very unusual. We cook it in a cast iron skillet and it gets a little bit of a little bit slightly crunchy on top and gooey underneath. It's really good. Um, anyway, lots of things to try. That oh, our mushroom bordelais has become one of our most popular dishes now. It's uh, a mushroom, a uh, um, uh, portobello mushroom dish uh, with this wonderful uh, gravy and it's with truffled mashed potatoes and green beans, super good. Well, the mushroom sushi you had, uh, that's my friend Michelle ordered that. That looked amazing. Yeah, yeah, we have uh, uh, a beautiful uh, sushi that has two kinds of mushrooms actually in it. It's got both, both king oyster mushrooms and um, um, what's the other mushroom it has, I forget now, but it's, um, it's got some in it and then some over it. So yeah, it's uh, very nice. And we use a uh, a spicy um, cream. Um, it's not the same as wasabi. It's not as hot as wasabi, but it's really nice. It's nice and warm in your mouth and uh, a lot of flavor, more, more flavor than wasabi. Right. Are you the re chief recipe creator for the restaurant? I am a recipe creator for the restaurant. There's many chefs have influenced our menu, probably Six different chefs, or at least, are on our menu. Um, so I am one of them. Um, my, my business partner, Rebecca Smith, uh, has a very unique property. She is a super taster. It's an actual medical condition where she has more than twice as many taste buds as the average person. And I think that has given us a huge advantage over other restaurants because she tastes things very, very completely. And it's very frustrating to get a, a, a special on because she's so particular, but when it gets on, you know, it's super, super good. And so, um, so that's kind of our secret weapon. That's so cool. As a super taster, does she enjoy food more than the average person because she has more taste buds? It's trickier for a super taster. They have to be very uh, careful with spice. If it's spicy at all, like, what I think, I don't even notice something is spicy at all. And she thinks it's like fiery hot. So like what I would consider a one, she considers a nine. So she has to watch out for pepper uh, and so on. So, but she can taste it and tell you if it's good though, which is interesting, even though it's too much for her, she still can taste it. Um, and then she can't have alcohol at all because it's so strong. Um, but that being said, she, she loves food and, and, you know, it is very attuned to good food. Well, she's in the right business then. <laughs> <laughs> Vegan Reese says, I love Sun Cafe and I miss your Saturday cooking classes. Are those going to happen again? Oh, that's a good question. I get asked a lot. I, since the pandemic, I've tried three times to start them up live. Um, and without much success. I mean, it's been a while, so maybe I should try one more time. Um, it's just hard to get the momentum going again for some reason. Um, I used to typically get 15 to 20 people for a class and, you know, trying to start them, I've only gotten two or three people and it's hours of work behind the scenes that people don't see. So there's a lot to, to putting it on. And so it was just too difficult to do it just for two or three people. So I'll probably try again and, uh, you know, just, you know, check the website um, or our social media. You can find us 
Sun Cafe LA on Instagram. And you know, we'll certainly post the, the classes there. Great. Well, thanks so much. And I, I hope you will do them again because they were great. Thanks, AJ. Thank you, Ron. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow when my guest is Kim from Vegan Travel and Jaunts. And she's going to show you how you can do vegan travel, even if you have to do oil free. And if you have to do oil free, why not go to Sun Cafe where they have a whole <laughs> Ornish menu? <laughs> Got that in somehow. Thanks, Ron. <laughs> Take care.